So we're going to now switch to the last part, which is about contributing guideline and code of conduct. Um, in the call, we have today Karen Lagesson, who, who is our expert for this part. Um, but I'll go through this in one minute to introduce what this part is for and why we're interested in it. So if we go in the next slide. Uh, so you would see this over and over, and we will be highlighting different parts of our vision statement. So building project for collaboration within inclusive community. Uh, and in the next slide, you will see that we're now moving to this part, which is about building for participation and inclusion. So who's making decision? Who's, uh, who's delegating task? Who is it delegated to? How are we planning our event? Uh, how is the community management happening? And who is monitoring what's happening in the community? So when we work in an open community, it's all about relationship. Uh, you depend on community members who are volunteers who are working on your project, probably beyond their own personal work time. So you, it's really important how you keep them involved and identify who's the active member, what are their roles, how you can give them uh, autonomy, and how you can also keep the governance so your project does not derail. So in the next slide will be what we are going to do with this talk uh, is to make you think about how to create a positive culture, how to think about contribution and collaboration. And please keep note of uh, the fact that this is going to really influence how you're going to write your assignments and draft your own contributing guideline and choose a code of conduct for your project that's very appropriate for your community. So with that, I'm happy to introduce Karen Lagesson. She is a researcher uh, in in Norwegian Veterinary Institute and also chair of the Carpentries Code of Conduct Committee, which is where I work with her. And I'm a huge fan of her work and I'm happy to have her in the call today. Thank you so much for that uh, very nice introduction. So uh, this talk will have, uh, will focus on two documents in, in this context. And that's the contribution guidelines and also uh, the code of conduct. So the important thing to bear in mind is that you as a project leader, you're trying to build a community around your project. You're trying to attract volunteers to your project and these will have diverse backgrounds and come into your project with differing, different expectations. Now, Whenever you have a group of people gathered like this, uh, a culture, a group culture is bound to develop, whether you intend it to do or not. And this means that you as a project leader, you have to take initiatives with regards to what kind of culture you want your project to have. Um, if you don't, a project culture will develop uh, without you. And this means that you have to uh, be, make some conscious choices regarding how you want your community to be. be. Uh, what values should your community advocate? How do you want people to interact with each other and with other people? Uh, the thing to remember here is that a project is actually a lot more than just its goal, goals. Um, it's a language, it's a shared set of norms, it consists of people's ex expectations to the project, uh, it's the tools that you choose to use, it's the systems you set up to uh, make decisions, it's the project identity. Um, and all of these things uh, affect the health of your community, uh, the community around your project, and uh, because of that, it will also directly affect the progress of your project. Now, how do you go about shaping the culture you want? Uh, there are two big things that can be done in this context. And that's to have uh, a clear set of contribution guidelines, which will uh, help your contributors, your volunteers interact with your project. And the second is to have a code of conduct. 
And these are two important vehicles that will help you as a project leader uh, to communicate to your community how you want your community to be. Now, so what we're trying to do is to get people to contribute to your project. It's in this context important that, to remember that your uh, contributors are people uh, with their own worldviews and their own stories. Uh, we need to take this into consideration when we're trying to build a welcoming uh, atmosphere so that people will want to con contribute to your project. Uh, one such community, uh, I'll show an example here, is the, the Carpentries community. Uh, that's the community that I personally am part of. And we've taken a very proactive stance when it comes to community uh, to project culture. And I'll show this through both the contribution guidelines and the code of conduct that this project has set up. Uh, so first to the contributing documents. Uh, so first of all, these are readily available within each GitHub repo uh, for, for each set of teaching materials. Um, we do this to make sure that it's easy for people to find them. So the contributing guidelines have to, first of all, they have to be easy to find. If you can't find them, you can't use them. Uh, so what kind of information should these kinds of documents contain? Uh, so they contain information that various kinds of people might want to know. So for your contributors, the people you want to help you out with the project, uh, you want to tell them the process and conventions that they'll need to follow when they're making a contribution. Uh, it should also detail how they are expected to interact with other members of the community. When it comes to uh, the project consumers, these are the people who might want to build off the work that you've done. Uh, it should clearly de detail how they can remix and reuse uh, your work in their own projects. And this file should give, give them a sense of how to do that and uh, what's allowed to do with the material. Uh, you as a project owner, uh, you will want to create and maintain this file and you'll, you should uh, make sure that you keep this file updated. Um, one good thing about writing and creating this file is that it will help sort out for yourself uh, how, uh, how you can have good interactions in your community. So let's uh, look here. Um, for the Carpentries, we have, in addition to the contributing document in itself, we've also uh, specifically set up web pages which will help people interact with our community. So this is uh, shown here is a list of channels, uh, communication channels into our project, which helps people help channel people into the parts of the project that they might want to contribute to. And this makes it easy for someone new uh, to find out what they can do. And this is, this is one very good way of doing that. Uh, okay, now we'll move on to the issue of a code of conduct. Now, the basis for this is that uh, to have a well-functioning community, we need to take into consideration that the other people uh, that are in our project are not carbon copies of ourselves. If you're lucky, you're able to build a diverse community uh, for your project. And a diversity of people and opinions, opinions will make your project stronger. It will help your project be original and adaptable and durable in the long run. Uh, the issue then becomes, what if something happens in your community that shouldn't? And this is where a code of conduct comes into play. A code of conduct speaks to 
what is accepted and what is not accepted in your community. It also speaks to what do we as a community do when something that is not accepted happens. So why do you, why do you actually really need a code of conduct? Well, the, there are really three things that a code of conduct does in your community, the role they play, it plays. First of all, it helps invite uh, new people to your project. Simply by saying, hi, we're here, please uh, interact with us. It also sets clear expectations for community members. It tells them how we want people to behave, what kind of interactions we want in our community. Last but not least, and probably most important, having a code of conduct tells your community that you care about it. It tells them that uh, their well-being is important to your project. Uh, and that is probably more, Im more important on a community context, uh, more important than anything else. Um, so here, linked in the presentation that I'm assuming that you'll get access to, uh, there are some examples of code of conduct. Uh, and I'll now show you uh, the Carpentries code of conduct, so you can have a look at that. So if we see here at the top, uh, I'm not, can you see my mouse? Okay, so here at the top, uh, this is the welcoming part. Uh, but we quickly move into the setting expectations part um, by clearly stating that uh, by interacting in this community, by becoming a part of it, we expect you to follow our code of conduct and we clearly state that not doing so uh, will have consequences. Uh, next, below here, we have uh, described some, a few examples of uh, behaviors that we encourage in our community. And this also helps set expectations for our members. Another thing that you'll see in our code of conduct is that we have clear guidelines for how to deal with incidents. If something happens, we have guidelines and procedures for what to do. And I want to emphasize here that it's very important to actually enforce your code of conduct. The only thing that is worse than not having one is not enforcing it. Because you have, if you have one and you don't enforce it, what you're telling people is that you actually actively don't care about the well-being of your community. Okay, so how do you get started on getting a code of conduct? Well, you need to start to think about what values you want your community to have. What kind of behaviors would you like to see uh, in your community? Uh, also think about how you want to process an incident if something sh should happen and what the consequences should be. Uh, last but not least, uh, you as a project leader, you will have to accept that this is something you have to deal with. Community star culture starts with you and your attitude towards these kinds of things uh, will permeate your project. Then some takeaways at the end. Um, encourage those who uh, have, have good practice in your community. Those who follow the, uh, follow the contribution guidelines in a good way. Those who help, in, help build a good community. Also, uh, make sure to interact with your community to build uh, these things. Um, this will help, uh, help ensure buy-in from your community members. Also set up a process for how to, uh, how to deal with car, uh, code of code, uh, conduct issues. Um, and uh, communicate 
these guide uh, these processes clearly to your uh, community members. Um, my last tip is really um, if you if at all possible don't write your own code of conduct. Uh, find uh, a code of conduct that you like and copy and adapt that one because uh, code of conduct documents can be quite uh, complicated to write. There are a lot of facets to think about. And that is it from me. 